I'd like to introduce Charles Stevens, the class of 2011 Lambda Fellow in Nonfiction. They come in together, John and Josh. They come by my office, smiling and in love. They are not holding hands, but seem as if they are. They are bubbly and not embarrassed by it. Perhaps that's how you know two people are in love. I feel like a parent. I should reach in my wallet and pull out a $5 bill and tell them to go to the picture show. You would think they were going to the prom together, not getting an HIV test. I am the parent snapping pictures and wiping crumbs off their face with my spit but I'm reminded they're really just getting an HIV test. They go upstairs to get tested, John and Josh. I think nothing of it. Greg is testing them. So I work doing reports focused on reports, pushing myself through the tedious reports. Time goes by. I'm thinking, what's taking so long? Still working, still not thinking. It could be anything other than what's expected. Perhaps I think the three of them up there chatting, they complete the test and Greg is talking them up. More time passes. I start thinking they left. I start thinking they left without saying goodbye. I create a story in my head about how insensitive they are, how inconsiderate they are, how consumed they are with each other that they don't say goodbye to me. They could have at least told me bye, but I work steadily, I work. I see Greg come downstairs for a moment to pick up something and then back upstairs again. I think nothing of it. I'm taking a box of file folders out of the supply closet when John comes up to me. Suddenly, silently. His eyes are red and puffy. He is crying. It takes me a minute to process what's going on, for the situation is symbolized into thoughts. This is too unexpected, and my mind refuses to take in the moment. And then I know what happened. It occurs to me what he's about to say. But there's a pause, an ugly, pregnant pause. In that pause, the tenderness, horror, and fear and concern rush to the surface immediately. But we're silent first. I've never seen him cry before. He starts to talk, but before the words come out, I consider grabbing him in my arms, but instead I say, come with me. We go into my office and I shut the door. We both sit down. John cries to himself for a while, cries into his hands. Time goes by between his sobs. I watch him. He is so into his grief that it's as if I'm not there. He does not seem aware of me at all, and I'm all too aware of him. I watch him curiously and yet sorrowfully. Tell me what happened, I finally ask, my voice gentle, delicate, purposeful. As purposeful as a stream. I'm trying to contain myself. I fear my words could break him if spoken incorrectly. Tell me what happened, the voice rings in my ear. I feel like a therapist instead of a friend. I feel so artificial, so fake, so insufficient. I feel like I should touch him, but I don't know how to. I debate with myself about hugging him while I wait for him to respond. Am I a professional or a friend? Professional or friend? It doesn't occur to me until that moment that I never learned how to be both. I'm also in another space. Start, I started playing everything in the back of my mind, Josh, all of what I know about him. I had assumed he would be HIV negative, but then how could I be sure? Because he and John were so cute together and bad things couldn't possibly happen to them? Another contradiction in HIV prevention, on one hand we say, you can live a normal life where it's just like any other chronic illness, but it's, and it's not a death sentence. But then we tell people, at the same time, whatever you do, don't get it. Social marketing, like any other marketing, is a lie. There are things you project your fantasies onto, like a projector to a screen, and a rational desire to be optimistic, even when being optimistic goes against everything you know about the world and believe. John struggles to talk. He cries into a crumpled piece of tissue. The tissue is torn and ragged from use. Tissue crumbs litter his hands and then the floor, evidence of his grief and stress. Solemnly, voice Cracked, eyes fire red, he forces it out. Josh is positive. Thank you.